Hello everyone, how are we? I am so excited to be doing this video today. Today we're going to be talking about my all-time favorite books. I actually have already got a video like this on my channel, which I actually did like in 2020. That's three years ago now, so I thought it was about time I do an updated version, especially if people are new to my channel as well, so you can kind of get a sense of like my reading taste and what books I usually gravitate towards. These are my all-time favorite. I've been reading for a very long time. I'm 27 years old, so I've kind of put together this favorites list over the past 27 years. I still expect to find more favorites in the future. I know this favorites list is going to chop and change throughout my lifetime but I just thought that right now in the year 2023 I would record my favorite books as it stands right now. I'm so excited to share all these books with you. I It's sometimes so hard to talk about your favorites because it's like how do you even do them justice? I always find it so much easier to talk about books that I feel kind of mediocre about or like you know actively dislike rather than like talking about my all-time favorite books like books that are perfect in my eyes because it's like what can I even say to you know do this book justice and like the words that are in this book like my words aren't going to be enough to describe how good this book is and like how much it means to me without any more rambling we're just going to get straight into it but first before I get started I would love to take a moment to talk about today's sponsor I am very 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 excited to partner with Skillshare for today's video in case you've never heard of Skillshare before Skillshare is an online learning community that hosts thousands and thousands of different online classes and members it is a place where you can get into inspired to try new things thanks to their very very large variety of classes on so many different topics. Whether you're interested in trying something new, something a bit more creative like maybe learning a musical instrument, learning how to paint, to create digital art, maybe crochet or knitting, or if you're interested in something a little bit more like mindfulness or how to be productive in a mindful way, Skillshare also offers so many informative and engaging classes on all those sorts of topics. One class that I actually completed last month was learning how to read tarot. I really, really loved that class. Tarot was always something that I've been interested in and this class just really helped me take the skills that I already had and really hone them and work on them so I can then use these new skills in a more impactful way. Tarot reading is also something that is like quite niche I would say. It's not that common so honestly so grateful that Skillshare had classes on these sorts of topics as well. Things that aren't as like widely practiced. There's also so many other classes on Skillshare that I'm very very excited to try. So if you guys are interested in Skillshare, Skillshare is offering the first 500 people who click my link in the description box 30 days free and 40% off your first year of Skillshare. That is an insane offer. I'm pretty sure that's the most generous offer Skillshare has ever had. It is one of their best deals. So guys, I would seriously take advantage of this opportunity. Skillshare, thank you so, so, so much for sponsoring this video and bringing this offer to my audience. I really, really appreciate it. So thank you so much again, Skillshare, for sponsoring this video. And guys, once again, remember to click that link in the description box if you want to take advantage of all of the amazing things Skillshare has to offer. With all that being said, let's get straight into my favorite books of all time. I have about 10 books to share with you guys, so I guess this is considered like my top 10, but they're definitely not in any particular order. I don't think I could do that to my babies. But the first book I'm going to talk about is going to be no surprise to anyone. This is what I consider to be my favorite book of all time ever since I read it when I was 15 years old. It has been 12 years since I read this for the first time and it has been my favorite ever since. I love it so much and of course that is The Secret History by Donna Tartt. I feel like this book changed my life. If I'm being dramatic about things, like I genuinely feel like this opened my eyes to a whole world of reading. This was the first book of its kind that I had read before. Like I think before this I was kind of only really reading like YA. I mean I was like 14, 15, you know, so like that makes sense. But I was only really reading YA. Everything that I was studying at school I found really boring. I was like I hate classics, I hate adult books, like give me the John Green, which of course there's nothing wrong with. But this was like the first book that I read that like wasn't a YA novel. And I was like, oh my god, literature can be like this. Literature can be fun and easy and a good way to escape, but it can also be this, which is still fun and easy and a good way to escape, but also very dramatic and there's so much going on and it's making me think. 
like oh my god this really just opened my eyes to literature I feel like everyone knows this as the pinnacle of dark academia it's quite funny because I actually really don't like dark academia I feel like dark academia as a subgenre is trying so hard <laughs> it's trying so hard to capture the aesthetic of dark academia while missing the point completely this like is dark academia to me and it's it was before dark, dark academia was a thing so it wasn't trying to capture a certain aesthetic it just was it it was a trendsetter it's so funny because i know that a lot of people have criticisms of this book and i know that their criticisms are valid like i hear them and i'm like yeah logically like what you're saying is making sense but whenever someone like doesn't like this book or says something bad about it i feel such like a visceral pain in my heart because this book feels so connected to me this is like another organ for me i know that's really dramatic but i said what i said and i feel the way i feel i love this book so much i haven't even explained what it's about for you guys but i feel like everyone kind of knows already we follow our main character richard he's an unreliable narrator he decides to change colleges and he goes to this college in new england he's immediately completely entranced by the classics department because our tutor Julian is very 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 selective about his students he only has five and they're this very elite group of students who kind of consider themselves to be more intellectual than all the other people at this university Richard manages to impress them and gets swept up in this world of elitism and wealth and something a little bit more sinister as well under the surface. Things are not quite all as they seem. It's honestly so great. I really love all of the characters. They're all super unlikable, but in a way that just like, I don't even know. This book like made me feel that I, there was something missing in my life. I'm, this is, okay, this is bad. I am Richard Pappen. Like I know for a fact that if I was in this book, every single move that Richard Pappen made, like. I would also make that move and I know that's not a good thing anyways I love this book so much it has such a special place in my heart I feel like if you watch me regularly you've watched me from the beginning everyone knows this but if you're meeting me for the first time hi my name is Jamie and the secret history is my personality okay now that I've spoken about my favorite book of all time my official favorite of all time now things are in no order so next I would like to talk about a book that I actually read this year I feel like it's probably the most recent addition to my favorites list and that is The Cat Who Saved Books by Sosuke Natsukawa which is just so beautiful I feel like everyone who is a reader everyone who engages with or creates book content on the internet should read this because I feel like it has so many messages on on the art of reading and it definitely like puts things in perspective for me as someone whose job it is to like read and recommend books it's such a short like delightful little story basically we follow our main character he's recently inherited a secondhand bookshop from his late grandfather and while he's kind of coming to terms with his grandfather's death and he's getting ready to set up this bookshop he gets visited by a talking tabby cat who takes him on a bit of an adventure where he meets three people who have been mistreated treating books and he has to kind of have a conversation with them and and save the books from the clutches of of these people who mistreat them in different ways this book honestly just kind of made me fall in love with reading again it made me want to really spend some time with like every individual book that I read it just made reading sound so beautiful and not in like an aesthetic way just in like a I don't even know how to explain it like this is what I mean when it's so hard to talk about books that you love like there's nothing that I can say that will do this justice maybe if I read out a little quote okay this is kind of towards the end but there's one little quote that says books are filled with human thoughts and feelings people suffering people who are sad or happy laughing with joy by reading their words and their stories by experiencing them together we learn about the hearts and minds of other people besides ourselves thanks to books it's possible to learn not only about the people around us every day but people living in totally different worlds like it seems so simple it seems so simple but like this book is just filled with sentiments like that and it's so beautiful and i honestly love it so much i genuinely think everyone should read it it's like under 200 pages it's so good i really really love this book so definitely has earned a spot on my favorites list next another favorite is the invisible life of addie larue by ve schwab i genuinely feel last time that i did a favorite books video um i had a different ve schwab book on this list and now that i've read more i have definitely come to the conclusion that the invisible life of addie larue is one of my favorites it has everything for me it has a beautiful story 
beautiful prose, beautiful characters, such gorgeous messages and ideas, and I just really loved it. I know this is one that gets a lot of criticism as well, but it was just so beautiful and hit me so hard. Like the emotions that I experienced when reading this was so strong. I absolutely loved this. By the way, guys, it's pretty safe to say that all of these are five stars. Like, not a single book here is lower than five stars. Anyway, I freaking love The Invisible Life of Eddie LaRue. Basically, we follow our main character, Eddie LaRue. She's really, really unhappy with her life as it stands. She is about to be, like, sold for, for marriage, and she doesn't want to live like that. She doesn't want to live this way. So she ends up accidentally making a deal with the devil in order to live forever and not have to be tied down to the life that she's currently living. Like she gets to experience the world. She gets to live forever and experience so many different lives. However, the main catch is that no one who meets her ever remembers her the next day. So she will meet someone and then like the next day they don't know who she is. So she's living this invisible life where she doesn't live in anyone's memories or anything like that. And it felt like our main character was so lonely, right? It felt like such a lonely book. So I felt so lonely when reading it, but like, it was just gorgeous the way things panned out. And later in the book, Addie meets a guy called Henry who does remember her for the first time. And it's so funny because some of the criticisms is like, Henry was so boring, like who was he, like blah, blah. But that's kind of the point. Like no one is supposed to be this insane, like special, like really, really great person. Like everyone's just so normal. But like living in Addie's life, oh my god, it was so, so gorgeous. I loved this book. So beautifully written and so emotional and really made me think about like my myself and my own ego and like what would I do if no one remembered me? Like would I want to live a life like that? Like am I invisible myself? Like I don't even know. Like it just made me think about myself in a big way and loneliness and yeah, kind of checked my own ego at the door slightly when I was reading this. But it was just so, so beautiful. I really highly recommend. Next, I'm going to be talking about an old favorite. It's one of my childhood favorites. It's also like one of my favorite movie adaptations. This was in my previous 2020 favorite books video. So this one has definitely stayed on there my entire life. I don't think this one will ever leave my favorite books list. And that is The Princess Bride by William Goldman. This is one of my childhood favorite books. And I don't think it will ever not be a favorite. It's just such an epic kind of like adventure story. And it's so fantastic. I genuinely love it so, so, so much. I just love it. This just has everything. It has everything. I feel like more people have watch the movie like seeing the movie then they've read the book but i highly recommend the book like it's so 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 good if you've not seen the movie or watched the book you are in for a treat like i wish i could experience the princess bride in both mediums for the first time again at some stage in my life i don't even know how to explain this the plot of this book i don't even know if i can it's a story of true love and it's a story of adventure and it's basically about a woman who falls in love with a boy and then he goes off to i think get a job or something like do some work and then she gets news that he's been captured by a pirate so he's dead and then she has to end up marrying a prince and she becomes prince's bride but her real true love is dead but maybe he's not and he has to save her from marrying this evil evil prince i feel like that's the best way i can describe this book just know that it is epic, it is hilarious, it is so good, and it is an absolute, just, it's a perfect fantasy story for me. It's, it's perfect, like, it really captures the essence of, like, a cozy fantasy, even though things are so high stakes. The comedy is there, the characters are there, I love this book so much. So, Princess Bride, you will always be famous. I love you. You will always be a favorite. Next, I want to share the only nonfiction on my favorites list, and that is Not That I'd Kiss a Girl by Lil O'Brien, which is a memoir from this New Zealand woman. And it's basically about her story as a young queer woman in the 90s. Our author, Lil, basically knew from a very young age well, she came to terms with it from a young age that she was a lesbian, that she liked girls, and she came from a family where her parents weren't very happy about that. And so we basically get to live through like all of that, her at university, being with other queer women and with straight women who may have been a little bit experimental, like experiencing all completely what it means to be to be a queer woman 
in New Zealand, especially in small town New Zealand. And it was so, so beautiful. Like I also just felt so at home reading this book as a bisexual woman. Like yes, not a lesbian, but I still have, you know, experienced being in relationships or situationships with women before. And every single passage about like the girls who would have a relationship with you, but then like when it came to like whether or not they were a lesbian, they would like walk all over you because they weren't actually gay. They just wanted to experiment. So they'd just like use you. Oh my God, like totally understood it. Like totally felt so connected to those stories and honestly learned so much from this memoir as well. This book had so much raw emotion in it. Like you can definitely tell that like, you know, Lil's experiences, they are written straight from the heart. I just feel like any queer person should read this and any straight person that wants to have a better understanding of what it's like to be a queer person should also read this. Like I genuinely just love this book so much and I know that it's a little bit more lesser known. So I just feel like I need to scream from the rooftops to people to read this book so if you're going to take any recommendation read this one because you're not you probably won't find it on anyone else's booktube channel just read it guys read it share it i love it a lot so yeah just immensely readable and so heartbreaking and heartwarming at the same time if that makes sense speaking of heartbreaking and heartwarming at the same time that brings me to anxious people by Bridget buckman i read this last year absolutely fell in love with it it was so so again like exactly my sense of humor so so funny yet still so like tender and human and had so much heart and depth to it and oh my god this book i also really loved i love Frederick ruckman's writing style i do need to stress but i think about this book on like a daily basis like this is my roman empire basically in this story we follow a group of people someone has attempted to rob a bank and then is now keeping a bunch of people hostage in this apartment that is currently being viewed by people and hosted by a real estate agent and basically we get to see the lives of every Every single person in this situation so obviously the person that has taken these people hostage every single person that is being taken hostage the policeman who's trying to like save these people we get an insight into every single person and how they're connected to some of the other characters and it's just so beautiful it's another book that kind of made me fall in love with being human made me fall in love with other people and you know just one of those things where like we never ever ever understand like or know what other people are going through. And you know, that's obviously a sentiment that means a lot to me. And I just really loved this book. I loved hearing about all these different characters. And you know, some of the characters that maybe were more unlikable, like learning more about their story and deeper into their story, it just experiencing empathy. Do you know what I mean? Oh, it was just gorgeous. I really, really, really loved this book and it's so well written. I recommend everything Frederick Buckman has ever written, but definitely Anxious People. I really, really loved this book. Next, I'm gonna share with you a favorite book that I read back in like 2021, like two years ago. I don't talk about it a lot on my channel, but I do, I swear to God, I think about it on a weekly basis. And that is The Female of the Species by Mindy McGuinness. When I was compiling my favorites list, right, there's this, this subgenre of books, of, of thrillers, I guess, that I really love. This trope, I guess, that I really love. And it is women or girls getting revenge on men for the, for the way that women have been treated at the hands of men. That is my favorite genre or subgenre like of all time. And I've read so many books like that now, but when I was looking at all the books that I have like read, which I love like within that subgenre, this one really stood out to me because this book was so fucking moving. So entertaining, obviously, like so entertaining, such a powerful message, but so emotionally scarring and moving. I actually do have a reading blog from obviously two Two years ago uh, still on my channel where I read this book and obviously it was a really hard time <laughs> it was a really hard time uh, but I really 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 love this basically we follow two main characters we follow Alex who is a teenage girl her older sister was murdered and she's very very upset about that I mean obviously but also especially upset because the murderer walks free so she's kind of training and learning how to defend herself and also so she can exact this revenge on this man and then we follow another character called Jack who is your typical like high school 
shock. Him and Alex form a very unlikely relationship, let's just say that. I loved them both so much. Like these characters were so real and so raw and so flawed and I loved them so much. There was so much in this book to learn about, like there was so much about rape culture, about the way teenage girls are treated and it was just so important and so powerful and I don't read a whole lot of YA anymore but if there is a brand of YA that is like the female of the species, I want to read every book within that category of YA. I don't read a lot of YA contemporary anymore, but when I do, it has to hit very hard. If it doesn't hit as hard as this, I'm not interested. <laughs> But I genuinely love this book so much. It's perfect, beautiful, I love it. Another one of my favorite genres is romance. So obviously I have had to rack my brain about all the romances that I love and choose a favorite. And I definitely know what that is. It's a book I read earlier this year and I've spoken about it a lot on my channel recently. And that is Seven Days in June by Tia Williams. I'm so glad to have this on my favorites list. I absolutely love, love, love this romance. This is a second chance romance. We follow our two main characters, Eva and Shane. Eva and Shane had a very whirlwind romance when they were teenagers. They have been separated for a long time. And then now, 15 years later, they see each other again in New York. They're both writers and they've basically been writing to each other through their work without even like telling people or people knowing or like them even being in contact with each other. These two are soulmates, like I love them. This romance was so moving. It was so moving. There was still some really like hilarious little lines like in the dialogue and in the writing, like Tia Williams did such a good job at not only featuring real issues, not only featuring a very deep and passionate romance, but also still keeping parts of the story like very lighthearted. And that for me is evidence of a very skilled writer. Like Tia Williams is very skilled. The chronic illness representation in here was absolutely perfect. And this book just broke my heart. But then Eva and Shane put it back together again. Like I just love them so much. I really highly recommend this book. I really highly recommend this romance. It is so deep and so beautiful and I love it so much. So definitely earned its spot on my favorites list. Next, I want to talk about a book that definitely I feel like sums up my life in my early 20s. Like, I have no other way to describe it. I feel like I saw so much of myself in this novel. So I kind of had to put on my favorites list and that's Sweet Bitter by Stephanie Danler. I read this beginning of last year, I think, and was blown away. Really love it, recommend it to everyone. I wouldn't call it literary fiction, but I know other people might call it literary fiction. But we follow our main character, Tess. She's 22. She moves to New York for the first time and she gets a job at a restaurant and she gets very much swept up in the, in the restaurant industry, in the hospitality industry and the people that she meets working at this restaurant. And I worked in a restaurant for about four years. And yes, not in New York. I did work in a restaurant in humble old New Zealand, Auckland city. But Auckland city is like the New York of New Zealand, okay? So, but I worked in a restaurant for four years and the experience that I read in here, I get it, I've, I've been there. This was a love letter to not only New York, but to the restaurant industry and the things that we need to do to survive in our early 20s. I felt so seen in this book. Again, it's another book that is so human and touches on like all of the flaws that we have as human beings, but with this like restaurant backdrop, which just made it like more fun for me. I feel like I need to do a reread of this as soon as possible, just so I can kind of like live vicariously through my early 20s again by reading this book. Like it, honestly, I love it so, so, so much. So highly recommend Sweet Bitter. And finally, I wanted to talk about my favorite series of all time, which is The Poppy War, but specifically if we're talking about favorite books, The Bird God, which is the final book in the Poppy War trilogy. This is by R.F. Kuang and this is my favorite fantasy series of all time, my favorite series of all time. I had to include this book in my favorites because I think about again this series on a daily basis. Basically in this series we follow our main character Rin who kind of defies all odds. All the odds are stacked up against her and she manages to get into a war college and then while she's in her first year of, of military training a massive war breaks out. So the Poppy War, this series, 
kind of is just a, a war fantasy about how unforgiving war can be. It draws a lot on things that have happened in Asian history. So I genuinely feel like the portrayal of war and things that happen in war is very, very accurate. And Arif Kuang also draws on a lot of myths. We uh, experience a lot about like shamans and gods in this book. I just love this series so much. Like the characters meant so, so, so much to me. Like Rin, absolutely love her. Like this book is so important, I think. It's so important. It's so hard hitting. I feel like I really, really learned a lot about history, even just by reading this like fictional book. I really, really love the Poppy War series, but specifically The Burning God. Like this really tore my heart in two, like the emotions I experienced when reading this. Very intense. Very intense. No one wanted to be around me when I was reading this book because I was a very upset and angry woman. Anyway, I love the Puppy War series. I feel like this video would not have been correct without me sharing how much I love them. So these are all my favorite books of all time. I really, really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really, really loved making this. It was really good to just like be positive and like share some books that I love with you guys. A cheeky reminder that all my socials are linked down below. I think I'm gonna try start posting on BookTok a little bit more. I've started like, I've got some BookToks in the draft. So if you are a BookTok viewer, feel free to follow me on BookTok. But yeah, I've got all my social things, like Bookstagram, everything, like it's all down there. Also, if you want more content from me, if you want early access to every single one of my videos, if you want like, exclusive videos, exclusive live shows, all that whole shebang. Uh, my Patreon is linked down below as well and all the information about the perks and benefits are on the page. But yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. And again, a massive, massive thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So remember to click that link down below if you do want a one month free trial. Thank you so much guys for watching. I love you all so much and I'll see you very, very soon in the next video. Bye.